lecture I will talk about creativity, information processing and the generation of new entrepreneurial ideas. I'm Saideepa Kumar, Research Fellow here at the Tasmanian Institute of Agriculture, University of Tasmania. And I've prepared these lectures with materials supplied by Dr. Greg Clydesdale, Senior Lecturer at uh, Lincoln University in New Zealand, and Dave, Dr. David Monkton, who's Lecturer of Agribusiness here at University of Tasmania. In the previous lecture, we said that creativity is really an act involving information processing. Mark Casson states, the key to being an entrepreneur is having better or more relevant information than other people. We have seen how expertise helps in this regard. Having access to information alone is not sufficient. Entrepreneurs make connections between different bits of information to form an overall picture. They have an information advantage that allows them to spot market and technological shifts that reflect business opportunities. The first to synthesize that information gains an advantage. Psychologists studying creativity have often stressed the importance of linking different pieces of knowledge and information. Sarnoff Mednick defines creative thinking as the forming of associative elements into new combinations which either meet specified requirements or are in some way useful. The more mutually remote the elements of the new combination, the more creative the process or solution. It is really about connecting elements that have not been connected before to create something novel. Along the same lines, Albert Rothenberg studied many scientific breakthroughs and artistic masterpieces and found that they often involved bringing together contradictory or contrasting ideas into new ideas. He called this Janusian thinking after the Roman god Janus, who's depicted with two faces. Examples of novelty arising from combination of contrasting business ideas are the affordable luxury of Nissan or the creation of the product non-alcoholic beer, for example. Economists studying entrepreneurship have made similar comments but they're more explicit about the types of information needed. For example, Peter Earle points out that profit opportunities are not just lying around waiting to be found. They are constructed in the minds of entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs develop new products by combining elements of existing products and diverse technologies while keeping in mind changing customer lifestyle choices. Peter Earle cites the example of how dual income households have led to new markets for DIY products to overcome the problem of not being home for tradies on weekdays. The growth in security systems, for example. Connections could also be made through synergistic marketing links between products. Examples abound in travel and home improvement shows on television. Connections could also be made by establishing internet browsing pathways between products through hyperlinks on websites, for example. The creation of new products or business opportunities does not involve creating something from scratch. Rather, it entails making new connections between ideas, capabilities, technologies and values. You must, of course, create a business model to determine if you can generate a profit. This may involve creating connections that would be harder for others to create. Let us now look at the different places where you might find an idea to start a business. One option, of course, is imitation. Just copy what other people are doing. The second option is to search for information in areas you're interested in. You may discover opportunities that you never knew existed, or perhaps information that makes previously rejected ideas suddenly feasible. We previously stressed the importance of expertise. Many people have devoted thousands of hours into their hobbies and developed significant knowledge. But be careful. Your passion for the subject may distort your perception of the market size. It is important to test your assumptions before launching a new business venture based on a hobby. Many opportunities are a result of changes in the market. New values or new patterns of behavior are always emerging, in which case an opportunity exists and all you need to do is discover it. You do not need to be the originator of an idea. Sometimes people, especially your customers, come to you with ideas for you to seize. 
Of course, new technologies always create opportunities to make new products or services or to do things that provide more value or reduce costs. And sometimes opportunities appear by accident. For example, a young boy made a glass of flavored drink but left it outside on the porch with the stirring stick in it. It froze overnight and the next morning he discovered a new product, the popsicle. Solving problems is an excellent way of finding new value for consumers. Imagine some of the problems farmers have on a daily basis. If you can solve that problem, the other farmers represent a sizable market. It may mean developing a new product or improving existing products. The point to remember is that any product or service is a reflection of one, the technology, and two, consumer values that existed when that product or service was designed. But new opportunities will appear. Look at any product or tool you use on the farm and ask yourself, could this be done differently with new technologies? You may have many ideas, but you still have to determine if it will result in a profitable business. And when American entrepreneurs were surveyed, they stressed that new ideas are a dime a dozen. Evaluation is the key. It can take time to develop evaluation skills. The last point I want to make is to stress the difference between an idea and an opportunity. There are many ideas out there, but many factors in the business environment are necessary to bring that idea to fruition. For example, ease of raising capital, large enough demand, and the existence of technology. An idea is not an opportunity unless the environment has reached a level that will support your business. Thank you.